Ooh, it's almost show. 10. It's time for the it's, yeah. <laughs> it's 10 10. Mildly, mildly behind schedule, but we're good. Okay. No we're we're, we're good. on the internet. Oh, good. There is ways though at 10. Yes. All right. Shall we do it? Let's do it. Oh, Greg is. And we're no longer live shortly. Hello, everybody. Welcome like, once again to the Dumb Luck Marine video podcast number 13. Lucky 13. Everything's going to go just fine. Guaranteed. Why? Do we have any problems with the cameras? No, no, there, or, no it wasn't cameras. Oh, computers. Computers. <laughs> computers. Everyone send us money so we can buy new computers. There we go. That would help. Do you have a fund me? We're, no, yeah, maybe a Kickstarter. Or sell t-shirts. Do that. Ooh. Is this officially our earliest podcast we've had? This is the earliest podcast we've ever done. Yeah. We recently had like the latest one ever, right? Yeah, we did the latest Damn. and now the earliest. What a world of experience. You know, you gotta try different things if you're gonna like grow, you know? It's just, it's just part of the essentials. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, we've got a guest today. I'm already talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our close personal friend, Kabir Bath. The first person ever to be on the show. Twice. Boom. There Got him. Go. Two times. Only I know where the camera's yeah, going. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm over here, but there's actually yeah. no camera in that yeah. direction. Brian, you're putting your, your your drink right in front of this camera. Oh. No, my camera's safe though. It, it I, I was strategic. <laughs> I made sure the, the the camera part was here. Oh, yeah. Speaking of drinks, this is, is our earliest show. Yeah. Uh, we're what are we having. Well, what, what's, I, what, Kabir, what do you cur- currently we have? We have virgin coffee, but I see you've brought enhancements. I've got I something was... for the beer cam. Oh, oh boy. yeah! Oh, ah. oh, it's a big bottle. You gotta yeah, hang it way go. back there. This is the target. No, nope. there you just see the word liquor. Okay, yeah. we can, put we, it we adjust. Oh, 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 oh. I thought this was the target. There, you put the thing okay. there. And there, not fits. boom. There see, it just go. works. Just look works. at that. It just works. Indeed. But Kabir, you're rocking Starbucks this early morning. Yep, that's pretty much my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This may be my second time there this morning. What oh, kind of might be? Uh, yeah, yeah. What kind of coffee you got in Before there? Before we just a good venti blonde mocha, you know, because who doesn't like sugary goodness? Mm. I like sugary goodness. Yeah. This, like is, this is pure berries, sugary goodness. Sugary sure, goodness. it's part of the show, right? Yeah. That's it. So. Otherwise, I would be not invited back. This show is they all... told me not allowed back. This show is all about enhancing life. Yes, it is. It's all about so the, now the I extras, have caffeine, and other things. They this... brought a spoon, but you know, just probably shake it. Oh, well, this is how I it's stir. A little, a little gentle rotation mm-hmm. of the wrist, whip it, whip the wrist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we can work at Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm a barista. Barista. All right, we got the mobile dashboard up here, and this is not dumb luck brewing. I, I'm gonna. I'm going to worry about that later, and I'm just going to go straight to the meat of the matter. <clears throat> where's, where's the beef? Where the beef? All right, there we go. Now I can see the chat without having to look. And I was I was going to move a, move a screen over there so Don't we can see Don't touch it anything. Everything, <laughs> everything is okay, yeah. Paul. Let it be. My ambition's out to outstrip my time. All right, so we have a guest, uh, Professor Kabir Bath. Yep. Um, joining us today, and uh, we're hoping to hit on a few fancy, fancy topics. And uh, one of them is, I hear you've taken on a really big goal in the next year. Looking Probably. to do a very impressive competition. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. Yes. So I have a lot yeah. of goals. So I know, say exactly. that, I like, oh, no, he's vague. <laughs> when will he get yeah, deeper yeah. into this? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to do Masters World. It's not trying to do. I'm already signed mm-hmm. up, already committed. That was an important thing, do it right away. It was funny because it was actually something that I sort of committed to the day I got my black belt. Me and my professor and like mm. some of my family went up to like celebrate and we're like having champagne. He's like, so you have to do Masters Worlds now, you know? I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, really? Well, yeah, there we go. Guess yeah. I have a big black belt tournament mm. right out the gate. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's exciting. That's great. So I'll try and compete a whole bunch of times. That's why I'll be out on the island. I'm mean, actually going to go to Oklahoma next month for like two weeks to train. Cool. Then I'll go compete a bunch of times between now and then, which is in August. So I'll do a variety of tournaments. Mm-hmm. Just trying to get as many black belt matches as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because it's a whole new world. Mm-hmm. Much like you know, the jump in belt <laughs> rank yep. is always different. It is. It's, a it whole feels per- the same way regardless of what rank it is, though, I yeah. would say so far. Nice. Wow. Oh, um, and where's uh, Worlds? Uh, what, when's that going to happen? 
Um, so Masters Worlds is in Vegas, August twenty something or other, twenty second to like twenty fourth. It's like a four day event, Thursday through Sunday type of deal. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be awesome. You guys should do it. You guys are masters. Yes, masters. masters. I I am totally on board for that idea though. Yeah, you I'm should not, do it. It's not like I'm not, but uh, just, Wreck some just guys. got a plan. Just got a plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's and that's another thing. Um, so with such a goal, like I've been following your social media and whatnot, and you've been up bright and early or dark and early, you know, yep. with your dad out training actually, and, uh, hitting the, you're hitting the road work, you're gonna, you're hitting the gym, like, is there the pool goal setting <laughs> All here? the things, yeah, yeah. all the things. It's, it's, it's clear that you're like looking to, to get into the best shape of your life to attack this. Is there, is there goals along the way that you've set? Um, well, I mean, like, one of my big goals is, like, I should quit just being so leisurely about everything. So, like, waking up early, <laughs> not my favorite thing on earth, remotely. Uh -huh. Um, so I was like, I think that means I should do it every day now. So I try and get up at, like, five every day. Me and my dad work out at, like, six. So there's, like, a double benefit because he gets all excited about working out, which is a bonus. Nice. And I get to have a little bit of accountability because otherwise he'll be sad. Mm -hmm. So that works. Um... But yeah, just trying to do more because like I need two sessions a day in some way and mm -hmm. it won't necessarily always be on the mat because a portion of my day will be like on the business and mm -hmm. then I'll coach and train in the evening. So I'm like, I need something in that first little chunk of the day. So I just been adding that in, you know, six days a week pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. It's good too because I already build momentum in my day. So confidence boosting every day, getting a little early win is always good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been it's been really good feeling great um yeah and i'm trying to get smaller for that competition oh that's right yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we're uh, down a weight what's your current weight right now right you? now i'm 188 so like with the gi i can be at the 195 and underweight class for masters worlds and probably by june onwards i'll be competing at 181 and a half in the gi so i'll be like 178 or so okay a bit. yeah like 10 10 pounds solid pounds but Sometimes I'm torn on it because I feel pretty good at this weight class and like I don't feel like I'm getting overpowered and I feel like I'm not like I'm pretty tall and it works well for me. So, but I know that when it comes to like worlds, every advantage matters. So, just yeah. be a lean, mean fighting machine. There you go. <laughs> right. Now, with the with weight cuts, do you recommend like uh, for how far? Like a student should drop down to weight if they're trying to meet a goal for either their first competition or second competition. Like, do you say, "Oh, try to stay around your weight"? Do you want to make a goal to lose uh, to drop to a lower weight class? Well, I guess there's two things. Like, if somebody's thinking of like dropping a weight class, that's every day you should be just improving your habits with regards to that. You know? Yeah. But like, if we're gonna be like really focused and just like not suffer, but abstain from all the little indulgences mm -hmm. that you enjoy like yeah. cream in your coffee and like yeah. everything Boots. super strict mode <laughs> yeah exactly you know then maybe like a hard six to eight weeks i would say for sure but it's gonna depend on the amount of weight too because you don't want to cut or like diet away a bunch of weight in a short period of time yeah because you will feel terrible mm -hmm. okay and i'm sure you've met guys at the academies who've been like i dropped 20 pounds for this tournament and then i went out there and i felt horrible mm -hmm. you know no it's energy. much better to do it <laughs> over a little bit of time and then really just like the one thing that really sets most people back is they drop a bunch of weight for a tournament and they go like super le leisurely and loose and relaxed on everything and they just keep making it harder for themselves it'd be easier to like drop 10 pounds and only gain back five through being relaxed yeah. with your lifestyle you know um that's that's what i try and do like as much as i can like i don't want to be more than five pounds away from what I want to compete at. Mm -hmm. But like right now, cause I'm making a jump to a weight class. Like I'm starting now to be really healthy and feeling great in August, which is really far away. If you think of it, mm. well, only four months, but well, yeah, you know, but it's a long period of time. So I can do it really progressively and like just make small incremental changes in my habits and sort of like strategies week by week mm -hmm. rather than just going like cold Turkey on everything and only eating, you know, so would you say that changing a weight class like that, it's like changing a plateau? Like you don't want to be bouncing back to that other weight. You want to like kind of assign this as your new metabolic state. 
Your yeah. Bo- your body's like, I'm happy here, and then you can, you can live a more totally unrestricted life. But still, like you said, not uh, not going crazy, but you can be. Your body will be happy mm-hmm. at this new this new weight. See, level, and by right? the time I get there, though, I'll already have changed so much of my like regular habits mm-hmm. and things that my my relaxed version there would be like the best version of when I was trying to drop down mm-hmm. to make a different weight class. You know what I mean? Like. I won't have as much of a variance as I would because I'm taking my time. Mm. Whereas, like, if I just, like, crash dieted for a month, then, like, I'll fluctuate so much. So, doing it over a course of time is going to be just so much better for long term. Mm -hmm. You know, the lightest I've been has been, like, 165, and I did that for the pans in, like, 2008. Mm -hmm. And I did that in 30 days. I lost 20 pounds. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I was a blue belt. I was a blue belt, yeah. And I lost 30 pounds in a month. Oh, Or 20 pounds in 30 days. And it was crazy. I felt so weak. Yeah. So you were like, are you sick? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, No, I'm just competing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that wouldn't be wouldn't be healthy <laughs> yeah it was it was cool i had muscles mm. well i can see muscles they weren't very large muscles mm. but they existed the definition yeah. started coming out yeah i had bones yeah. craziest oh. thing who yeah. knew who knew did this happen for yeah. real yeah that's why you put all your glamour photos right you totally can, you can pull them back up and slap them all over your instagram exactly yeah exactly it's big key so with such big moves i guess there's goal setting involved mm-hmm. right and so for you like, how do you approach goal setting? Like, just in general, not necessarily for weight cutting. But. Yeah. So, generally, whenever I set a goal, um, there's a couple things I like to do. One is, of course, like, I have to actually make the goal like some sort of concrete, measurable thing. But, like, instead of just being like, hey, I'm going to make 181 and a half at this tournament as my goal, that's the goal. Yeah. Of course, that's like how I measure the success or failure of it. But I'm going to try and set up like three process related goals to that, which means like those are smaller things that I'm doing all the time. So that might be one of my things is I'm going to wait, wake up and work out at 6 a.m. six days of the week. Mm. That's a process oriented goal. That's something that I can manage on the daily. And I know that if I hit that process, it'll, you know, work out for me in the long run. Same thing. Another one of my process goals might be like, hey, I know that I'm going to have to rest a lot. Make sure that I am in bed by x o'clock every night hmm. or eating you know like so like with relation to that i'm gonna think of okay what are three processes i can do to hit that so that's one part of what i'll do when it comes to goal setting and the other thing i like to do is i like to think of like three obstacles like i'm gonna think of like man what's gonna set me off track right away and then plan two solutions to each of those obstacles and usually it's from the planning of the obstacles that i get my process related goals from hmm. so like yeah, I, I break it down. Yeah, yeah. I break it down because it helps. Like, the better yeah. you can plan and, like, look at things. And if you don't consider your challenges to it, you're just going to let them, like, completely knock you off track. And I'm sure, like, most people, they've had a goal that they were working on. And they just didn't account for something. And when it happened, it's like, oh, no, confidence down. Mm-hmm. But if you've already thought about it and you already sort of planned a little bit of a system, maybe not, like, perfect, but, you know, like, oh, you know, one challenge I'm going to have is – you know, I might not have the meals ready in time. And it's like, okay, so what can I do? What are two things I can do? Okay, if I don't have a meal, these are the only two or three places I'll go eat from if it has to be a convenience meal. You know, or you can plan, like, you just make contingency plans. And that's one of the best things you can do when it comes to, like, goals. And that was something that I've started doing a lot lately, more so than ever. But yeah, that's mm. that's sort of how I approach goal setting. So the big goal, the one measurable outcome... You know, my three process mini goals that are like daily things. I do daily or weekly things that I can measure like, oh, I did that this week. That means I'm on track because it's sometimes going to be very hard to know if you're on track. Um, And then I plan like the three obstacles and too many like solutions for each. Um, And one reason why I think it's really important to have the process goals is that time that I was talking about where I lost all that weight for the first two weeks, didn't lose a single pound. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it just, like, came flying off. But Mm -hmm. I knew, like, okay, if I do these things, if I drink these two gallons of water a day, Mm -hmm. that's one thing. If I make sure I have these five meals a day, it will work. You know, if I make sure I train twice a day, it will work. So Mm -hmm. I was, like, checking those boxes, and I believed that all these processes will lead to the right outcome. 
Because sometimes it's like, oh no, nothing happened in a day. Yes, I'm back to the drawing board. <laughs> Trust in you your know? planning. Yeah. yeah. Planning is super key. Mo- vastly underrated, too. People don't. Maybe they do plan, but I don't oh. encounter enough people that plan enough. Mm. Where, do you, you, where did you get your ideas from, like, uh, goal planning for certain, like, either people that you followed or things that you read or... Man, I'm always, always, like, learning and trying to seek out mentors and people who are really good um, in all different areas of life. Like, I think you can learn a lot from people who are just successful at anything. Mm. Um, man, I can give you a giant list of people to follow on the internet. Maybe I will <laughs> later, but, like, just really, like... Man, there's no shortage. One thing is like just hang out with a bunch of people who are also doing well in whatever area or have experienced success. Like, so for me in competition jiu jitsu, man, my professor oh. is a great mentor in that yeah. regard, you know. <laughs> so I have someone there that I can look to in business, you know, I have two or three people that I really rely on there in my own like personal development and trying to be better. I have some people there as well. But I think, um, like one really good thing is when it comes to just improving anything is be super filtered on your life. Like good in, good out type mm. theory. Like my Facebook feed is nothing but like stimulating stuff that will make me think about being better or reflect on being better. I will unfollow people who post garbage all the time. Mm-hmm. That expression. Yeah. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, yeah. I don't need that. You know, so yeah. I try and really do that. Do you think like with the social media, like it's, uh, it's like been really kind of polarized of like either there's people that are super positive and then a lot of people that post like a lot of negative negative posts and stuff that you know could really affect people around them I mean as a, as a community I guess you know someone's posting something negative every single day or about you know politics or blah blah, blah and causing all these confrontations like, do you think that affects people from reaching their goals maybe or yeah totally it's like a, a major distraction it's funny um, one of my mentors Bedros Koulian, he's like a guy in like the fitness space. He was talking about how in he did like a little like study. He had this strict plan for everyone in his group to follow. And one group of people, he told them like you're going to cut out all of these sources of media or something. And the other group, you could still watch the news. Mm. And the group that still watched the news every night before mm. they went to bed, they would just have poor results because they were just getting a bunch of negative like stimulus Mm-hmm. Every day that like it's like a fog, you know, that sort of like grows over you in that way. So I'm like, after I heard him say that, I was like, well, later news. I haven't watched the news yeah. in so long. <laughs> Apparently, people bomb people and people <laughs> die. I have no idea. All I know is what happens in my little sphere. Yeah, of influence, yeah. And that's all. That's super. Yeah, there's only like so much, uh, so much you can take in at a time. I think yeah. I think it's good to uh, segment your time if you want to worry about world issues and stuff like that. Kind of segment your time for that, but don't have it surround your entire life. Like this time yeah. where it's mm-hmm. okay to turn it off and be mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna focus on me right now. <laughs> I'm super extreme. I don't yeah. care about world, <laughs> at all. It, world issues at all. Yeah, because mm-hmm. truthfully, the amount of steps until it affects me is so far removed that. I'm like at the very end of this chain of influence, you know? Yeah. So for me, that's how I always feel bad when people talk about something like, eh, don't know, <laughs> yeah. don't know, and don't care. And they're like, but it's so sad. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but I'm pretty happy without. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's certainly like personal preference. Like, like I like to be in touch a little bit and I pick and choose the news. I don't watch the news. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like being bombarded with the uh, things that, that uh, that may not interest me or like 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 okay that's sad but it doesn't really affect much like it's like maybe a small story about something that's just sad just for the sake of being sad mm. you know <clears throat> or uh, other you know similar things like that but uh, I like to kind of stay abreast of like what the, what's happening in the world mm. but so I pick and choose where I read it and how I'm like headline nah headline now okay yeah, i want to know more about this yeah. right i'll see, seek it out and like brian said in the time frame that i give myself right like yeah. this is this is time i can spend to do this otherwise i'm gonna be focusing on other things right yeah like there's other people like like my wife likes to be more in touch with that so she mm-hmm. like, delves deeper into that and i'm like oh i can't even Ugh, don't, <laughs> don't, don't want stay out of that want, mud <laughs> right it's so it's like it's like that's her preference that's fine right mm-hmm. it's like but i totally agree with you that it's a matter of uh, filtering what's going into your 
into your brain there what's coming mm-hmm. in i think uh, yoshi has a question there for you oh let's see bum, bum, bum. you use the words obstacles in your goal setting process what's your thought on mindset in the vocabulary instead i like to use opportunities instead to help with my growth mindset thoughts dude vocabulary is super important uh absolutely um opportunities obstacles both are great you know um and I mean, it's just an easy way to think of it. And usually, like, there's actually a book, The Obstacle is the Way by, like, Ryan Holiday. Great book about um, sort of that whole mindset. And really, obstacles aren't, you know, terrible. They're just a challenge, an opportunity, all the same thing. But I try to be very cognizant of how I speak in general. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, like, more, like, I'm more so focused on, like, always supplementing, like, a positive phrase in there. So, like, you would do there, Yoshi. I would definitely do that. But... Yeah, like, definitely, I think vocab is very important, because that's just, like, subliminal stuff. Like, how you're speaking is sort of... It's just, like, what you say, you're going to, like, you know, reproduce. Mm -hmm. So I try and be super thoughtful of that. Um, Man, I had a thought about something you were saying. Oh, yeah. So uh, Paul was talking a little bit about, like, the ability to filter. Right now is, like, the most amazing time in the universe, because you can (laughs) literally curate exactly what goes into your brain. Yeah. Whether you want to learn stuff, whether you want to have only certain types of interactions and experiences, you can literally tailor your life's experience to yourself. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the past, it was sort of just you like took whatever you get, you know? Yeah. Whatever's on the radio or yeah. TV yeah. when you but get But I home, think some you know? people don't take advantage of the ability to filter mm-hmm. as much as they could. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of filtering can go a really long way. Like, you don't have to be, like, as hardline as me. I'm not that hardline, though. (laughs) But, like, like, you can definitely, like, hey, if you have interests or things you want to get interested in, expose yourself to more of that. It's very easy. On Facebook, see first from this person. All my mentors are all the people who I think are, like, positive influencers on Facebook. They are see first, so they're the first couple things I see in my feed. Also, because then I'll, you know, likely then I'm already satiated on my Facebook fix, and it was all good stuff, and then I'm gone. Mm-hmm. You know, rather than like sifting through a bunch of crap, and then I find something like there's a lot of value in like really being conscious of how you filter and like what you prioritize. And you were saying, um, along those lines, I guess, um, with goals, <clears throat> obstacles, or challenges, or opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like in the terminology, important, but when, uh, when when you miss a goal, when an obstacle overcomes you, even if you had planned it, so what sort of steps do you take at that point in time? So you've stumbled effectively, you're, you're off your plan. Totally. Yeah, but you, you kind of saw it coming, maybe you planned for it, you did all the best things you could possibly do, but you still missed it and it still still hit you. What, yeah. is, what is it that <clears throat> you do to take um, steps against that? Uh, from knocking you off course brand new plan time mm. just like what that's the greatest like learning opportunity is when something doesn't go your way because otherwise it's just like you don't have good feedback mm-hmm. like you don't want to just be like going blindly and assuming your plan is perfect you're gonna have to like change your plan man i've changed plans a lot but the goal has always remained like you can mm-hmm. always correct course right like course correction is a huge part of it because mm-hmm. you know if you're just like oh this sort of sent me back but i'll keep plugging away in this direction that's more harmful than stopping taking two steps back and scrapping that plan you know like and i think sometimes people they sort of like stick with the plan that wasn't working and like oh that setback was just like a little thing i'll just ignore it but maybe you should like stop really evaluate it and you might have to change your whole plan might have to change your whole way of approaching a certain issue um and I do that all the time. Mm. Like, but now actually on the flip side too, like I'm slower to change a plan in off of like a one-off instance. Mm. So That's like exactly. it, it has asking. it has to be not <clears throat> working for a little bit of an extended duration of time. Mm. It'll depend on what the plan is relating to. Like in a business, if I make a new decision on a way I'm going to approach something, mm. I'm going to run that for a quarter. I mean, I see what happens in that quarter. Sure, it might have some setbacks in there, but that's such valuable data that I can use to make the next plan better. Whereas if I'm just hasty, like, oh, no, P 
people all died in that class. That's a bad example. <laughs> people don't want to, zero fatalities to date. <laughs> exhausted. Right? See? Were yeah. Too right? exhausted. But like, <laughs> yeah, they just go in, out back. <laughs> there we go. But like, if I'm too, if I'm too quick to react to a setback, I miss out on a lot more information that could really help me make a better long-term plan. Mm. Like, if you just have a setback, and oh, quick, change everything. Mm -hmm. You miss out on like, a lot of learning opportunity. So like, mm. I'm okay with letting the mistakes last a little bit because I'm not really trying to achieve all my goals in like a year. Um, and one thing that recently someone was sort of telling me is like, when you think of like some big audacious goal you have in your mind, right? And like, you, we always think of it as having a very small timeline. But if I told you you had like 20 years to make it perfect, mm -hmm. would you have as much pressure to be like constantly frantically changing? Probably not. You'd probably think about it a lot better too because you take away that sort of like scarcity of like the time that you have to hit it. So like for me, like I have crazy goals with Kaboom and I'm going to hit them all, but I know that I have a long period of time. It doesn't have to be in three years, although I do have some that are like broken down to that yeah. level. But knowing that I have, you know, I have 25 years to mm -hmm. do everything in that space that's need to be done. Are you, are you saving those ideas or uh, you plan on <laughs> sharing them? <laughs> oh, well, I don't care. I'll share all the things. Um, like, like what, it, what, 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 what your, what your role and your vision, uh, I guess for Kaboom. And... Um, well, one thing is, is I've really wanted to always make, uh, like martial arts, a real career for people. Cause I'm sure a lot of people, um, who are very passionate about martial arts and like, they want to pursue it on that next level. Like, Oh, I'm going to be a coach. And they're met with a world of negativity from everyone. Like, you know, is that a real thing? Yeah. You can't. Okay, and that that actually goes back to me being grumpy as a white belt when I had told like a black belt at my school that I'm like, no, nah, you can't really make a living off martial arts. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, touche, yeah. good sir. I will now ride this out forever. So like, one of my goals is like, um, yeah, I'm gonna make a million dollars in Kaboom in a single annual year, probably in three years. That's mm -hmm. our goal because I want to be able to give my top guys true careers that I can be proud of. I mean, all like my main guys, you know, they all have full benefits. They all have bonuses. They all get paid mm. competitively, whatever else, you know? But like for me, like, man, I want to make it to this place where it's like, Oh no, I have a real career. I'm like a professional in this field. And then I think that is super powerful. And from that, you know, I can spawn off into other things, but kaboom wise i'm trying to build up to make it that type of organization because i don't think many people are thinking that big i'm definitely thinking that big mm, nice. all the time you know <laughs> oh, for sure so yeah that's one of my goals there and then i have like other like on the mat goals like i want to have 25 black belts under me for sure but that's not in 10 years that's <laughs> that's that 20 year timeline whatever yeah. it is you know yeah. um yeah all sorts of things but yeah, those are two of my main <laughs> through the Kaboom channel. The business side is I want to really build it out to be a place where I can have a true like professional development, professional career opportunity type situation. And that's why I'm always like actively trying to learn from other industries, not just the martial arts industry. Cause I think sometimes the mindset there can be a little bit fixed. Um, but in other industries, there's no like, you're thinking outside stuff. the box. <laughs> yeah. I got to think outside the box. Cause that's only all the other cool results are outside of that box. Yeah. I don't know, you know, something, something new, something different. Yeah. Um, totally. you, uh, I noticed that also you do like a lot of, uh, seminars and stuff like that. You're always traveling and, and going to different places. Uh, all the time. What, uh, what are you going for? What are you, what are you taking? <laughs> Man. So, um, just a couple things I'm involved with. A lot of it is like, just like within my industry, there's like a, a mastermind type group. Just a bunch of really good school owners, some really successful successful people who've already done a lot in that space. I think it's so valuable to be going out there learning about you know marketing, learning about how to run the school, learning how to structure curriculum, learning how to really deliver like a whole new world of value and experience to people. Because I, the way I think of it really is like, I wanted to get good at jujitsu, so I had a coach, right? If I want to be really good in this business sphere, I should have a coach or mentor in that area. If I want to be really good at being an instructor, I should have a coach for simply being a great instru instructor. Like I'm very, very big on having a person in each sphere of my life that helps me with all these different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, in an average year, I probably go to like, six to ten different seminars you know like 
and it adds up. So like last year I spent like thirty grand going to seminars, flying around, learning, and I would do that every year, all mm. the time. You know, that's yeah. great. I've had a lot of positive growth from that and I have a lot of opportunity to pass that on. Like and the thing is, is like not all those things are just purely business stuff. A lot of the times I'm learning about mindset or just like general life strategies and stuff that I can pass on in, you know, little bits and pieces to students. Like me talking about goal setting. I, I did not just make that up. You know, I learned from people about how to think better about these things. Um, because a lot of times, like, our problems in life are not really, like, the actual problem. It's just, like, more so how you think about the problem. So I need to hang out with people who think much better than I do mm -hmm. about certain things and certain, like, issues, right? So when I can do that, it just helps me be, like, a multiplier. Mm. Like, I, I can do more now because I'm better equipped for all the tasks, all the things I'll come into. So... For me, that's like huge. The other day, I just actually was yesterday Friday. Yeah, yesterday yes. was Friday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I made a giant commitment to a program, and it's like my stomach was turning. I was like, oh, that's a lot of money to spend right away. And I'm already part of some other stuff. But I was like, ah, it'll be worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I'm, yeah, I think it's very important to invest in yourself. That's why, like, you know, for students, like some students, like, oh, you know, tuition maybe like at a price point that's like, I don't know maybe reasonable, maybe unreasonable, depending on where they're at. But I think like when you start realizing the value and the impact you can have on your life, it's really worthwhile, you know? Like like going to the gym is a steal of a deal when yeah. you think of all the positive impacts it can have. And for me, that's like how I am. Like I'm down to invest in myself because I really should be investing in myself because being scared to invest in myself means that I wouldn't bet on myself to do good. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely down yeah. to go think, all in yeah. on me. <laughs> you got to be on time. your own team. <laughs> yeah. I got to be on my own team, you know? So like sometimes when people are sort of hesitant to invest in like something that's good for them, mm -hmm. it's because they sort of like have like some sort of self doubt that mm -hmm. uh, they won't, yeah, they won't be able to make the most or they know it's good, but Oh, whatever, whatever. If so. I could add to that, I think, just from my own personal experience, but from what I think goes on in someone's mind, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm also all about that. Like, I love the idea of personal development. I don't think education ends after school. I think it's really important to invest in yourself. And I've been, like, my since I was young, I've been sort of involved in sort of personal development and whatnot with me and what my friend Desmond, right? And we've been trying to build things, trying to start businesses, trying to get things going, kind of thing. But like since we were 18 and, we, and so it's kind of half-assed whatever right mm -hmm. um but desmond went on in full force pursued everything to develop himself to he puts himself in front of people that are doing what he wants to do and everything and he had many many failures and many great successes and then they failed and they're like he's you know recently started to stabilize and started to build something really big i on the other hand stepped out of that stream of thought and ended up being much more mundane about it and you know, mm -hmm. dabbling in things and you know buying a house making you know roots and like just sort of living 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 the everyday life right mm -hmm. much to my own chagrin because it's not what i want yeah like but uh, it's comfortable and it's safe and i think that's what puts a lot of people off from investing in themselves because i know it's put me off from investing in myself is that i felt like i had nothing to invest in like i put this effort and money into doing this i want to apply it right now i want to mm -hmm. do it in, with something but you you show up at work and you're like nope yeah <laughs> like this is not going to happen in this workplace right yeah and so that's why things like this like this idea here gives me that energy and that excitement to push forward with that Mm -hmm. and invest in myself and try because you can start applying these things to it right and and i think that's where a lot of people fail and fall off well, not fail but people uh fall off the self-improvement push is because of a lack of a venue to apply it totally right? and like 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 yourself you're immersed in something you're building and it's exciting and it's it's maybe maybe easier to stay motivated that way because it stares you in the face every day but that's another question i'd like to ask but you know but uh but for many people maybe that that isn't the case 
do you have any ideas that might be able like to give to people if they were wondering like how do i find that fire that that motivation that that space to apply this man i think uh really the big thing with that is it's very hard because in the situation you're sort of describing right the mm -hmm. atmosphere is their work environment which is everyone who's thinking super stability mode mm -hmm. not that stability mode is a bad thing mm -hmm. but when you're trying to grow mm -hmm. it's very hard to stay comfortable at the same time most growth happens when you're pushing yourself to do uncomfortable things mm -hmm. so that's why connecting with people who are thinking that way is really huge and for me i had no one locally 0, 0.0 percent mm -hmm. of the people i knew locally were really thinking about that or i hadn't made the connection yet mm -hmm. maybe now i know some people local that are mm -hmm. but um Oh, your computer went blank. I don't know. Oh. That one, too. Is that a situation? Phew! Oh, boy. Saw, yeah. saw Brian point. He's like, gold red alert! Yeah. Alert! Gold red! <laughs> Looks like that camera's dead. Anyway, okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Okay, I just wanted to make yeah. sure. But yeah, yeah. um, with regards to that, so for me, I had no personal, like, mm -hmm. physical contacts. It was the internet. Mm hmm like the internet is amazing you can connect with like-minded people there and that's a great way to fuel the fire because if you're trying to work on some like personal development stuff and you're only talking to people who don't care at all about that sphere mm -hmm. there's no like there's no like fuel mm -hmm. right there's no like you can't express it it's sort of hard to do super isolated so i think that's probably the best thing is like man on the internet there's no shortage of very particular interest groups forums mm. groups whatever wherever you can discuss so for me that's how i started like really pushing and thinking bigger and bigger and bigger like when i was just an instructor at another school like back in the day like it was the internet that started making things like hmm, maybe i should work on like being better like oh i'm exposed to these new thoughts oh and look there's other people who like these thoughts too they are in america don't care let's <laughs> bounce ideas off let's discuss i think that's a really big thing um on the other side like that's a good way to like sort of nurture all those thoughts um but of course it's hard if you don't believe that you have like an avenue to express it in right like you don't like oh well i'm working all day i don't have an opportunity to do this later you totally will if you're inspired by what you think of the thing is going to be what happens with a lot of us is we get away from all personal interests and hobbies and other things because we're like well i'm gonna really focus on this and then i'll just rest and be comfortable <laughs> in the evening time but if you like did some extra stuff and like you stayed up super late and it sucked short term you'd start building a little bit of momentum i think it's about building momentum in that direction so it's sort of goal setting like in in the way that uh, if you you have to set those markers so that you have to hustle to get to them basically like if you put a little extra time in you're gonna make that goal. You're gonna hit that point. You're gonna advance yourself to this to this mm -hmm. level, right? Yeah, yeah, but I think you have to have something that like mm. actually inspires you to do it. Mm. Like you're just like, oh, I'll make some extra money this way. You might not really care about it, mm. you know. But if it's something where like, oh, I can solve this unique problem and do some other stuff, mm. that that's sort of the more exciting of a project, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're just like, oh, I can. You know, nah. Nah, maybe I'll, you maybe I'll, maybe I'll better. improve myself. You gotta care. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have a a reason for why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think it's really hard. Yeah. And of course, you have to have a network to help support you in mm -hmm. doing that. And okay. both of those things are garnered by putting yourself in front of people that are doing something that you'd like to do. Be totally. in a place that you want to be in. Totally. So, sort of, maybe not a mentor at that point in time, but definitely inspiring to you. Yeah. yeah. You just need exposure. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times the lack of exposure is like, yeah, that's that's what I, my take on that. Mm -hmm. I think the internet's amazing. The internet was actually not that. Like, it was the reason I got really into jiu-jitsu because in my regular life when I would just go train, the first, like, year of jiu-jitsu, I was a super hermit at jiu-jitsu. I talked to no one. I stretched 40 feet away mm -hmm. from everyone else <laughs> in the corner before class. But online, like, I would, like, talk to people about jiu-jitsu. And mm -hmm. I got, like, more and more into it. And then... From there, you know, I did the same thing when I started be wanting to be a really good instructor. I started searching like about stuff on that, and I found resources on that. And then, coincidentally, the people who are talking about being good instructors are also people who started thinking about having their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Led me there, you know, just by connecting with people 
And then within that new group of people, there's some, you know, and just keep climbing that way. Yeah, it's very interconnected. Shoulder, shoulder cam. Oops, that Sexy. was the wrong button. <laughs> Sexy. Ooh, racy. Here's, here's me trying to be discreet and change cameras and da, 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 da. Yeah, trying to do it blind by touch. Yeah, it's all kind of interconnected in a way, I guess, where you need you need all of these things to to truly build that drive. You need you need that mentorship. You need that goal. You need that uh, goal setting. You need that planning. You need to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of comes together as a cohesive um, entity in order to make it work. So what is the first step you think for somebody who wants to change what they're doing and advance themselves in the world what is the first thing you say like the internet should they search out a forum that uh, is something they they're interested in or we're talking should... writing on a piece of paper <laughs> number yeah. one <laughs> yeah exactly yeah a little bit of both really i mean I think, uh, I mean, if you're just trying to improve, man, books are amazing, you know? Books, yeah, we didn't really, books. like, yep. books are the number one tool, I would say, with them all. Like, read a good book. Because mm. books are like, hey, all of your experiences in trying to be good at something, I can just, like, get it for fourteen ninety nine <laughs> at Chapters. <laughs> Count me in. Mm -hmm. or, you know, like, that's usually where I would start. But, um, but sometimes it can be hard to be like, oh, I want to read I'm, I've ne I haven't read a book since grade eleven or something. You know, there's probably a lot of people in that in that place. We have magical audiobooks. Now. Yeah, you have audiobooks. You have <laughs> TED talks. Just start like yeah. cruising around. Find something that sparks you. Because if you're not like really, you have to find something that will like really like awaken a little bit in you. Mm. And it might just come up like randomly. But usually, I find you have to. Like paper too. Like sometimes just think, sit there and dump out every single thought on your mind. Like man, that's something I want to take action on. I, why haven't I done that yet? Mm -hmm. Or like, um, like a good goal setting exercise is just like start right now. Like what are things I want to do? What are places I want to go? What are things I want to have? What are hobbies I would like to do? You know, and then go through them. Like hmm, okay, now which of these could I do in the next year? Just like the art. Like could I do? Which could I do in five years? Which of these would probably be like ten years so I can hit that. And then at least you start like reflecting on it. I think yeah, maybe pen and paper is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, just start great. thinking. Like Brian said, one. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. start thinking. Yeah. The big thing is like we don't really tend to like mm. think enough. But be yeah. prepared to be scared. Oh yeah, I definitely think, scary. I think definitely scary. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody is a little terrified of what they'd like to accomplish because they have to face a fact that maybe they can't. Right? So or I guess get it if, just right away. If or you, yeah. you, might, you might fail. Yeah. <laughs> if you do this exercise, turn off the fear. Just let it pour, I think. Let it just go out mm -hmm. and try to figure out like what would be awesome because I think just about anything is possible. Yep. You gotta decide how much to sacrifice to get there, but I don't think there's anything you can't accomplish. Yeah, with enough. Mm -hmm. And like one thing about this is, it's easier to go all in on stuff when you're like young, mm -hmm. too. Like if you're like eighteen to twenty five and you want to pursue some crazy ambitious stuff, you should definitely do it right now. Especially if you're still living at home. <laughs> yeah, you should go all in because you can. You know, like um. Yeah, it's definitely, like, the fear thing is hard, but I think that's just, like, it's easier to not be afraid if you know you won't give up on it. Hmm. If you think that you'll, like, wilt and just, like, walk away from it, then it's pretty hard to go all in if you already know that if it gets hard, you're out. Hmm. You know, like, for me, yeah. like, Kaboom has been crazy hard. Hmm. Several times over, it's like, well, guess we're closing in two months, guys. Yeah. Or, like, very, like, yeah, all the time. Hmm. But... You have to be, like, resilient. I think, like, uh, when it comes to, like, entrepreneurs, that's probably the one thing that really sets them apart. Like, successful ones is they are able to, like, persevere. Really, actually, anyone who's successful at anything they do is because of, like, perseverance. Like, my favorite quote in life is about perseverance. Because there's, like, super smart people who end up not accomplishing much. 
There's crazy athletes who do so good and then they dwindle off, you know? But, like, the great ones are the ones that just, like, persevere and they're always pushing through it because it's going to be, like, really hard. Mm. Like, there's, you can't, there's no, like, easy way about it. Like, it's going to be a terrible grind no Any, matter what. Anything worth achieving is going to be difficult. Otherwise, it would yeah, have been done already. way more difficult yeah. than you thought it would be, too. <laughs> also, as a disclaimer, <laughs> yeah. way more difficult than you thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it's quite a deep segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Well, that's good, though. That's, that's Let's it. go read a book Let's, now. Yeah, <laughs> book time. Let's line up some audio books. Actually, yeah. even just um, uh, I, I work myself. I've been noticing just putting my earbuds in, listening to either podcasts or other people's opinions and stuff like that. Even just staying away from music, so at least you're learning something. You're learning about someone else. You're learning about their skills mm-hmm. or whatever. Even just doing that, and you're ah, exploding. Oops. I made myself small, <laughs> and I was scared. <laughs> I got scared, you guys. Oh, look at that! I, I didn't even know that, that thing that, did that. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be the Ooh. thumbnail. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> My fear is I descend. Yes. Yeah. But uh, like like I said, basically like how you're filtering. <laughs> Okay. How you're filtering what actually comes into your head is like, you know, even if the if you're doing mundane stuff at work or you got some free time, start pumping with something else that's useful, right? So, mm-hmm. just, that was, yeah, I rarely listen to music now. But sometimes I think I should listen to more music, but like on the drive here, I'm listening to a podcast. Yeah. Or like, yeah, I'm usually always. But it's so easy now. Like, like I'm saying, like technology is amazing. If you want to just like reprogram your brain... You can just be like listening to stuff all the time. Yeah, like, it was, let yeah. it absorb. <laughs> totally. Uh, so how long has the school been open now? So with the new location, it's been about uh, new location. We opened the new spot in July of last year. Oh, July last year. It's not that long. Feels like a really long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's because it went so great. It's there. been it's so been, awesome. It's been so progressing great very there. well. And, yeah, uh, it's been, it's been a lot people. of fun there. Yeah. Actually, it's funny. I was going through uh, just uh, uh, the what's it on uh, Google Maps or whatever. It's got the reviews and stuff like that, and there's so many reviews on this. Oh, I know, it's so many. Just... I think in total, I have like maybe close to three hundred. Yeah, I have like a hundred forty something. How many do I have? Uh, Let's see. Is there a number? Uh, one hundred forty. One hundred forty on there. I think like, I have another hundred something yeah. on Facebook. I have group on ones. But it's cool. Like people are enjoying their life. Yeah, that's like, what do you, what do you, that was sort of my mission. Yeah, yeah, like what do you see? What do you uh, think when you when you hear this stuff? Like obviously, a fist bump. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. I, yes. Success no, um, it's really good because like obviously that's like the best indicator of you're on the right track. Mm. People are so compelled by what you're doing that they just have to share their experience. Yeah. yeah. Right? And uh, that's always amazing. Like, mm-hmm. So, like, seeing that is huge. And, like, I, I think, like, that speaks super highly. Because I think if you search, like, martial arts in our area, it's, like, we have 140, and then, like, another school will have, like, 10 to 15 yeah. or 40. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm just sort of measuring, like, how good we are at fulfilling our customers' needs off that. Like, that's an indicator of that to me yes it's very hard there's not like a lot of like other quantifiable ways like you'd be making a bunch of money and everyone hates you because you nickel and dime them on everything like i'm sure you've had that experience oh, that yeah. happens right yeah, but i told you about it <laughs> yeah and that that's you know this yeah. is what for me is like oh wow we're getting people leaving great things or they're posting about it, they're sharing about it so yeah yeah seeing reviews, especially lots amazing. of lots of people with their uh, parents bringing in their kids kids try it out get hooked on it i think mm-hmm. i read one that you know uh someone a girl wasn't into like p class and stuff like that when she comes to the class has a structured system that she enjoys and now she's like likes PE totally class and yeah you know be more active in, and and there's sort of crazy stuff. stuff that happens mm-hmm. for people but i think it, i think it's the same thing it's just like they just invested in developing in that way like when i think of like I leave those type of crazy testimonials about like the coaching programs I'm part of. Mm-hmm. They've had like huge impacts on me. Yeah. Just like how the so like when I see these families or these adults who are in our program like doing the same thing, it's like perfect. Mm-hmm. We're actually fulfilling whatever it is that they really needed. Yeah. I yeah, I think that the at least in this day and age, like the written the written review 
is probably the most valuable marketing tool you can yeah. get because it's like I don't know I know every time I've looked at something as small as a restaurant you know mm -hmm. as big as you know something you're gonna invest in you always read the reviews oh, right totally. when you're buying a pen on Amazon you start reading the reviews, how, how does you know? it glide across the exactly page. I need like, to know that it's like, yeah it's like oh oh this one star review why is there three five star and one one star what's uh -huh. going on here right and I'm sure if you're looking to invest in a martial arts school which is often a long-term commitment um, if you're truly committing to it right mm -hmm. like um, you you want to be putting it into something that's going to be uh, something that you truly enjoy and truly are getting the value out of and to have like next to no reviews it's like hmm maybe mm. they just opened up or what yeah. but then if you're sitting there on 150 reviews and 99 percent of them are all five star it's like pretty much guaranteed unless they farm this out to some mm -hmm. <laughs> some uh some, some bots in, bot in, in <laughs> yeah. india or yeah. china or wherever or hundred of those are from the philippines yeah, exactly. yes. Like, yes right, right? like with bad english no yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a super and you know then you can get a personal feel too like i find if you're reading reviews like that like uh about martial arts schools or whatever mm -hmm. you can get a feel like like people keep saying the same thing over and over again then you can tell it's like oh this is places fosters a great attitude or this place exercises a good discipline or whatever mm -hmm. it is you know like you can you can draw it out from those reviews and it's totally you know what's interesting? The number one thing I think that we get praised on is that we know everybody's name. Like, that's <laughs> that's cool, I guess. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, that's one of the things that it leads to all the other things. But yeah, it's yeah. like, it's just interesting when I read the reviews because I do sometimes see what they're like, what is common themes here? Let's yeah, analyze a little bit. An important part of your business. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's good to reflect. Well, mm -hmm. I think it makes it more per personal so everyone knows each other. It's not like you're just coming you know, in, into a gym to... Hey, know, Brent! Yeah. Brent, right? I'm thinking that's what it is. <laughs> no, that'd be terrible. <laughs> Coming to the gym to go on the cycle and then go yeah. home, right? You know, it's like, yeah, yeah actually involved with all the, the training and the, and the coaches and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, now, now, there's definitely a lot of uh, reviews for, like, uh, for, for parents and their kids and stuff like that, and even a lot of cases where, you know, the parents are, they watch their kid do it for, uh, you know, six uh, six to 12 weeks, and like, okay, well, I, why, why am I not doing it? And they yeah. end up mm -hmm. joining. But uh, we have a, like a pretty big uh, adult class as well. That's uh, like what's uh, roughly how many? Like I haven't been to other schools, like just schools, but like compared to adults for kids, do you notice a difference in other schools that you've been to? Or in like the ratio? Or, like, yeah, the numbers? yeah. Do you think is because uh, I know it, it seems like there's a lot of kid kids classes, but we have a huge adult. Uh, yeah, class I as mean, well. um, I think for us, we definitely have. I don't know true science behind this, but I'm guessing we probably have the biggest youth sort of jiu-jitsu program, mm -hmm. like pure jiu-jitsu program. Cause like we have maybe like 230 kids that train jiu-jitsu oh. with us on a regular basis. Um, and I mean at that last tournament, we took out 50 kids. Yeah. So of those 200 something close to like 25% or 20% of them are all yeah. competing too, which for me is super cool. Cause I don't even care if they like win or lose or whatever. It's just more so like, wow, all of you were confident enough and like jiu-jitsu enough. We're like, hey, let's go do this tournament thing, you yeah, know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just a really big focus for me, the kids program. Because I think, like, you can really, like, change their whole core. It's like, uh, it's more like giving them a foundation, whereas with adults, sometimes it's more of like a corrective measure, <laughs> you know? Because yeah. you have... a series of bad habits you've already learned over, mm -hmm. over time yeah having to unlearn yeah but our adult program has been growing so much i think we have like a really really unique like vibe between everyone like i think everyone there mm -hmm. is friends somehow yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well not somehow <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's yeah. really neat because i've been to other schools where there's like little just pockets of friendship and mm -hmm. like people who interact with each other whereas at kaboom i feel like it's like everyone literally greets everyone and i might joke with you a little bit more but we all joke mm -hmm. we all hang out we yeah. all train hard and it's like the other not cliquey you know? yeah yeah exactly which which i yeah that would suck if i came and it's like oh you guys are only over there hanging out mm -hmm. i don't think that type of like mentality would really 
survive. Like, it yeah. seems to be most martial arts schools, at least that I've been involved with, it's all sort of cliquey. Yeah, don't you dare look groups. at me, you blue There's belt. Groups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> uh, what White are you belts. doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I, I don't know. There's something about martial arts does that. To people i guess because there's people that come into varying levels of commitment mm. or varying levels of different goals and stuff like that but it's it's i don't know it's pretty unique i know we're all we're all members of kaboom here so it's sort of biased but <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sorry. yeah but uh but it is uh it is a more welcoming atmosphere than i've seen at any other martial arts school that i've been to so mm. not to say that other martial arts schools aren't welcoming they are. Mm -hmm. It's just a different experience than I've than I've encountered. Yeah, yeah I think uh, one part of that is that we all have different goals. But then you, one really thing that I like, I usually say this before like every tournament season comes up, or like I'll drop it at the end of class. But like when each of us are like pursuing our goals, it's benefiting everyone else. Like if you're just here for fitness, that helps me. If I'm here for competition, if you're mm -hmm. just here to hang out with people, mm -hmm. that's great. Because I'm here for competition, that means more people are here for competition. Or, <laughs> yeah. or vice versa, like, everyone benefits. But only when you, like, realize that every single person has a value that they contribute to your pursuit of growth. Mm -hmm. One thing that happens, I think, sometimes, like, oh, I can't benefit from you guys over there. Mm -hmm. So, who cares? Yeah. You know, or you're not on my level. Or what? You know, that's the lamest yeah. thing ever. Exactly. Everyone's looking for reasons of why this person is helpful to me so it's that I met may be the difference mm -hmm. it really 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 is uh, a team working together as opposed to yeah as it, opposed to special teams it's, <laughs> it's weird because usually people think of martial arts as being like an individual activity because it is but like when you leverage it with the all the benefits that come from being involved in the team mm -hmm. you just multiply everything you know which is much better if everyone just went in and out and like you came to practice you did your thing you just beelined it for the door mm -hmm. i don't think you'd train as often i don't think you'd have as good of a, an attitude about hard days versus good days mm -hmm. you know you would cut yourself off from a support network if you thought of it as such an individual pursuit so that's why i really tried to make sure it was like super welcoming that was like goal number one because i when i did my first lesson i was like oh no one cares i'm here yeah, yeah. great no. cool yeah. guess yeah. i'll just die guys well, that, later you know you don't even know accountability like, thing for sure yeah. for, for pushing yourself out there uh speaking of uh, also your uh, your coaches um uh, we had one of your one of your coaches competing in the Copa Catana, as well as yourself. Uh, who's actually putting on a, a seminar today? So, uh, what does that what does that make you feel like when uh, one of your uh, I guess students, great? Uh, yeah. I love that. That's <laughs> awesome. I hope all of my seminar. students are way better than me, and I hope people are way more excited to see them do jiu-jitsu than they are to see me do jiu-jitsu. Because yeah. that just means that I did a good job at some point along the path, mm -hmm. and hopefully put them in a position. And for today in particular, like it's really great because he's doing a seminar to help him achieve his goal, but he's coming with like the giving end, like, "Hey, I'm going to provide some value to you guys. Mm -hmm. Please help me now." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, which which I think is really good, and like I'm excited to see what the turnout is. I expect at least 20 people there, nice. um, which should really help him just rapid fire towards that goal because his big goal is hey what's well, actually secretly my goal but uh, i think he should be a world champion at some point but he has to be able to fly it all the places do all the things mm -hmm. so to be able to get everyone out today is amazing and it's always been cool because like ray is a super high level guy but he still carries himself like a playful white belt all the time. Yeah, he really you know? does. He really, like, really does. And that's yeah. that's the like that's my ideal. I don't want students who think they're the shit because then you're smashing everybody. Yeah, because yeah. then you're down. He will smash you, but it'll yeah. it'll be like In the a funnest way. smash yeah. you you know with laughs. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and if he wins at a tournament, he doesn't like thump his chest or do anything. He's like, oh great, that one gay bye. Yeah, bye. Yeah. bye. You know, like okay, yeah. great, which is perfect. And it's a you know that's actually one thing for like all of my sort of top guys is like having a good sense of like being like super humble is what allows you to grow into these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do you see like the super braggadocious guys continue to improve. Usually they plateau and like, you know, it sort of sets them back. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited because man, Ray has things he does that I don't do ever. And that's great because that means he's 
you know, he's comfortable learning, exploring stuff, and there's some sort of vibe where that's okay, like, to learn. Yeah, it's a different, different dynamic because you guys bring different, yeah. different parts of, of the game, too, right? So you're getting different to- flavors every, every totally. class as well. Totally. <laughs> I think everyone likes that. Like, actually, it's interesting. All of my top guys, I don't think any of them do jiu-jitsu like I do. No, everyone's got very unique yeah, styles. Like, yeah, like, there's, for sure. like... Me, I don't wrestle like Alan at all, or like Andy, or Ernest, or Brandon, or JC, yeah, or any of those like purple belts and brown belts. Like I don't do anything like those guys. But ta da! You guys, you yeah. know, like They're it's just cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. On that note, I think we have to close off since we are yeah. going to the <laughs> <laughs> since that seminar yeah, is coming on up. Minutes, yes. Yeah. Um, is it actually? That's eleven eleven now. Oh, right? cool! Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So today we talked about motivation, goal setting, planning. You're trying to push I, a button. I will. I'm just closing. Oh, put Would your you? camera on you. Oh, no, <laughs> it's okay. I'm. Yeah. I this, this is why I need to keep that. Yeah. 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 So have I like dual, like, like a I, check I and balance. Over there, <laughs> I look over there, then I'm like, uh, so yeah, I'm looking help, away I'm from camera. Up. That's why we need it there. Yeah, we yeah. need it here. Um. Anyway, yes, motivation, goal setting, planning. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, growing business. We talked about uh, your own goals and uh, your own um, plans for the future and uh, community yeah. and uh, martial arts. Yeah. All the good and stuff. Get, what your, a good... get your goals together. Get Make your it goals together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we want to thank you very much. Uh, Professor Kabir for joining us today. Yeah, I love Again. doing this. <laughs> Again? I love doing this. I would Please do this come back. all the time. Oh, anytime. Until I run out of stuff to say. Oh, that, I don't think happen. that'll happen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> we have instant yeah. content. Yeah, absolutely. It's really awesome always having you on. Yeah, it's yeah. my pleasure. I really enjoy myself. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for coming out. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on podcast number 13. Number Ooh. 13. Yeah. Uh, check us out on Instagram. Actually, we got some new pictures uh, that you posted up of some of your bot openings uh, yeah, yeah. of uh, that... stuff for the brewery. So that's still on the go over here. So, Box, uh... Uh, so our first um, unboxing video is coming out tonight. <gasps> Gasp. Keep an eye out. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Oh boy. Yeah, the Instagram. beer will be flowing soon. Yeah, soon. We're a couple hoping. months, I hope. Hoping. Yeah. In this general area. Right here behind us. <laughs> yeah. So that's at uh, uh, Dumb Luck Brewing on Instagram, uh, Facebook.com slash Dumb Luck Brewing, Twitch.tv slash Dumb Luck Brewing. Uh, Which one's and the brew one? Uh, that's, brew. that's the Gmail address. Oh, that's Gmail. Don't worry yeah, about yeah. it. <laughs> if you want to call, it's uh, Paul at dumbluckbrew.com if you want to email not call but you can call too whatever I just hit up on just Instagram just figure it That's, out Instagram's a new place to it's, be, just yeah, do I the know. Insta slide stuff. in the DMs yeah yes. <laughs> slide right into the DMs alright All right, well we better get going yeah. this is Paul this is Brian and yeah, this is Kabir and you're right. awesome yeah Peace. probably yeah <laughs> and, and here, oh I gotta do this cause Brian will get mad at me there you go oh. I gotta get mad at me.